Basically, since we are made up of electrons, we are quantum beings. Uh, <clears throat> everything in this room, whether it's solid or whether it's us and we appear to be solid, is all energy. Even Sasquatch is a quantum being. We also have an aura. An aura is an electromagnetic energy field. Uh, we're surrounded by that aura. Some people can see auras. I've taught many people how to see auras. If anybody wants to learn later on today, I can give you a quick lesson on how to see your own aura, play with your own energy field. Even Sasquatch has an aura. Some people have stronger auras than others. Mine is not that strong, but many people stop watches. The TV gets static on them when they walk by, stuff like that. I believe Sasquatch has an aura or an electromagnetic energy field that's much stronger than our aura or electromagnetic energy field. That's some of the reason why when they are in the area, a camera's malfunction, we get blurry pictures of them. Imagine a boat going through the water, it creates waves. If the Sasquatch has a very strong electromagnetic energy field, as he or she is walking through the existing electromagnetic field, uh, they may create those waves too. I own the Montana Vortex. My wife and I, Tammy, she wasn't able to be here today. Uh, we own the Montana Vortex in Nelson Mystery in Columbia Falls, Montana. The uh, Montana Vortex is a genuine quantum or gravitational anomaly uh, that defies the laws of physics and nature. And a couple of scientists have told me at some point in time the things that we've discovered there may actually redefine the laws of physics and nature. We purchased the Vortex in 2004 to research electromagnetic energy fields, try to put some science behind what happens there, and to teach people about energy and the quantum world that we live in. By the way, if I go back, that's my, my wife, Tammy. That's her back. And uh, those are all large orbs. Strange things happen in the vortex. Those are red orbs. And uh, the white feet tell us that they believe they're ancient spirits here to help and heal us. And they say that many of them also could be Sasquatch in spirit form. Uh, terrestrial vortexes are swirls of electromagnetic energy. They're an anomaly in the Earth's electromagnetic field. They're measurable, and through research, we have determined that they uh, <coughs> conform to what's known as the Fibonacci spiral. Fibonacci spirals show up from all over in nature. Pine cones have them on the end, rose petals, uh, leaves on roses. Uh, there's over 1,400 plants in North America alone that conform to the Fibonacci spiral. So it's a natural occurring thing. <coughs> Vortexes are known worldwide as portals. They, uh, many researchers in this room have experienced portals. I've experienced them myself. And they do exist. And there's not only scientific evidence for them, uh, but there's also ancient evidence for them too. Where's the scientific evidence? Well, NASA, in uh, July 2012, announced that plasma physicist Dr. Jack Scudder of uh, the University of Iowa uh, discovered inter interdimensional or magnetic portals in the Earth's electromagnetic field. And according to NASA, Scudder has, he's actually developing it still, uh, has developed a, he's trying to develop a way for spacecraft to actually tell when these portals might open up. NASA's not the only people that are doing research on portals. We've been doing it for 15 years, and there's many other researchers out there. We saw uh, Dave Pilates uh, vanish on the History Channel. There was a researcher there that's also doing uh, research on portals. <laughs> The Montana Vortex was originally discovered by the Native Americans. The Blackfeet tribe had the longest oral history at the Vortex. And uh, the fellow on the right is Gordon Comes at Night. He's a Blackfoot, uh, we call him a medicine man. Uh, the Blackfeet call him a healer or spiritual elder of the Blackfoot Nation. That's his wife, Kathy. 
Gordon and many of the other Blackfoot elders come to the Vortex and perform ceremonies there, honoring not only the energy field, but the ancient spirits and their grandfather and grandmother spirits that they believe still live there. Years ago, um, I uh, studied under Gordon, and he told me a lot about what the Blackfoot believe about Sasquatch. They call him uh, Misakitaki or Okidaki, which means large mountain spirit or original human being. They believe that they are uh, protectors, healers, and they also believe that they're interdimensional beings. Uh, Eleanor Many Gray Horses, who is a healer also of the Blackfeet Nation up in Canada, has told me she's about 90 years old about this fall. Puts her arms around me and said, Go, you're never going to catch a, black, or a Bigfoot because they have one foot in this world and one foot in the spirit world. And over the years, uh, I've come to believe that that is true. Here's good. Gordon taught me a prayer. I'd like to say it for you. It's a Blackfoot prayer. And uh, <clears throat> it's basically giving thanks, not only to us being here, but for our existence, and also asking the Sasquatch people to protect us. Mistakitati, okitati. I don't have a tani kima Pokemon. I was kumani kima Pokemon. I don't have a tani kima Pokemon. Mistakitati, okitati. So basically, go in peace and know that you are protected. <clears throat> For many years now, I believe that the Sasquatch uh, beings and many other entities that people experience in their paranormal studies can be or possibly are interdimensional beings. Uh, there's a lot of evidence to indicate that. Some of you are familiar with Matt Johnson's work, and uh, I have no reason not to believe Matt. Um, based on my experiences at the Vortex and in other areas where there are electromagnetic anomalies. This is my wife Tammy again. Uh, we work in the summertime at the Vortex. When we get too much snow, we take off and we head to the desert. Our Vortex is on a major ley line, an earth energy line that travels through Canada, down through the Vortex, uh, Utah, Arizona, down into Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula, and then right through the Nazca lines. Ley lines are usually about 65 foot wide, and over the last seven years, we have documented hundreds of sacred sites that occur on these ley lines. Usually, they're pectoralists, uh, <coughs> medicine wheels, and this year we had an opportunity to go back and measure those areas uh, with measuring devices and determine that many of them are electromagnetic anomalies very similar to the vortex. This, uh, like the Laki, indigenous tribes all over the world uh, have known about these energy fields and have even uh, packed images of them into rocks in almost every country in the world. The Black Bee called the Montana Vortex a place of no return. It's part of their oral history that at some point in time somebody disappeared there and never came back. So far, we haven't lost anybody, but uh, we do believe that our research shows that there could be possibly three interdimensional portals on the property. We've been doing work trying to open those portals. Uh, myself and one of my guys have actually been in uh, two separate portals and had experiences in them. This photo is by Mark Cable, 2017. He's Colorado, Colorado. I think quite some of you know Mark, we're friends with him on Facebook. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, he called me up one day and said, uh, you're not gonna believe what I took a photo of today. I was coming from my research area on the eastern side of the Rockies. And I looked up and I saw the spiral out in the distance. He goes, I picked up my phone really quick. I took a quick picture. As soon as I took the picture, the spiral collapsed on itself and poof, it disappeared. <clears throat> There's a kind of a blown up picture of it. I'll go back to the other one. So we see those spectacles back in the rocks, those spirals. And I told Mark, Mark, this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Uh, 
you're the only person uh, that I've ever known that has not only been able to see that, but to photograph it. And maybe our ancestors all over the world who were putting those spirals on the rocks, that's exactly what they were seeing too. Uh, based on our research and observations, uh, we believe that these vortexes uh, can be gateways, bridges, portals, into other dimensions. Uh, <clears throat> strange things happen at the Montana Vortex. Some of you have been there and experienced it for yourself, or maybe even at the Oregon Vortex. This is Matt Johnson. Matt, I think, is 6'10". I'm 6 foot tall. We're standing on a level platform there, and uh, there's a line of energy at the Vortex that goes right through there. And, uh, <clears throat> This is what happens when we change sides. Matt shrinks down, and I grow back to my normal height. If you take a look at the, uh, oops. If you take a look right there, I use that as a point of guy. That uh, yellow thing is about his chin. It's hitting me about right there. And when I go back, uh, all of a sudden, Matt's way over the top of that. That's just one of the strange things that happen there. We shrink and grow people. <laughs> things show up in the house of mystery that were not there at the time the photo was taken. Maybe they're just coming through that overlap between one dimension or another. This is what I believe is a little Bigfoot that showed up in there. Very little gray creature. You know, nobody saw that. The lady was taking a picture of her adult son there, and she came running outside and said, look what I got on my camera. This wasn't there when I took the photo. And uh, we had a little Bigfoot at that time that was going around uh, doing small whoop, whoop, and knocking on the house and doing things like that. I, I guess I should preface it. Where we live, uh, like Scott said about living with Bigfoot, uh, we live with him every day. Everything that he talked about, we have experienced. Uh, and if we have it, then they'll probably get some ideas from him today and start to playing around with us doing those things. So it's an everyday thing for us, and the paranormal is an everyday thing for us, too. If we go three or four days and nothing paranormal happens, I mean, I look at each other like, what's going on? Is the vortex shift or something? So a lot of crazy things happen. Uh, we have massive bending of light in the vortex. Uh, the cracks in the wall are only about a, a half an inch wide. You can see light coming through. Uh, everybody is kind of distorted. This little girl was not in the house at the time the photo was taken. She wasn't even on the grounds. So we don't know what dimension she came from. None of us have ever seen her. And that happens every summer. People take pictures in there. And 25, 30 times, we'll have extra people or entities that will show up in the house of mystery that were not there at the time the photo was taken. <clears throat> we have massive bending of light. Almost every day we get photos where light bends. That's the light uh, coming in through the windows and doors. You can see it's totally bending. Uh, this right here is the cracks in the wall. The guy is either see-through, same thing here with her. Uh, <clears throat> the light has moved, the light energy has moved into the room. And basically, since we're all energy, uh, we're just, our energy, when we're in the house of mystery, just mingles with everything else. We have literally thousands of orbs. On any given night, you can go out some nights, you won't get any orbs. Uh, 10 minutes later, you'll get orbs like this. No matter which direction you take a photo, you'll have orbs there. And a lot of people think orbs are dust, and all kinds of different things, but uh, people in this room can see orbs. I've seen orbs for close to 25 years now outright. Uh, I've had people come in and point out orbs that nobody else can see. You take a picture and, uh, and they're there. So uh, we can see orbs. Orbs are, I believe, there's many different types of orbs, but one orb, I believe, is Sasquatch. Last year, we had the most interaction with uh, the forest people, Sasquatch, Janu, than we've ever had. Um, Tammy and I, from the beginning of the season, constantly asked them to give us signs to show themselves to us. 
uh, <clears throat> to test us to see uh, uh, just to see if they're there, and they didn't let us down. Uh, over the summer, we had uh, many glyphs show up. Uh, this little glyph was not there uh, five minutes before I came walking back through. It was there. Same with this one right here. Uh, just in a matter of a few seconds, that glyph appeared and uh, nothing was there that we could see that put the book there. And that's generally what happens. And we feel that they're testing us. How observant are we to be able to pick out these things? I have a new maintenance man. They're playing with him right now, leaving the rocks on the trail. And he just cleaned the trail, kind of testing him to see if he can see what's going on, too. I showed this picture. Um, as many of you know Russell uh, Whitlaw. And uh, I, I showed it because I wanted to show you, this is the entrance to the House of Mystery. Uh, my head comes to about right here, six foot tall. That's about six, six right there. The tarp is up probably in the seven foot range. Here's a uh, picture from the same, but I'm down the way, about 50 or 60 foot. Last year in October, I had about 10 people on a tour. I think it was our last day open. We were really slow. Tammy was raking right out of the back of the gift shop. And uh, I was teaching people how to see their aura. When I looked up, and right here coming up the trail, I saw a head and part of a body. And it, actually, the, many of the, the leaves were off of the, the plants already. It started losing their leaves. So I had a much better sight than this picture shows. But I saw this large being walk up the trail, turn his back to me, and head over to the entrance of the House of Mystery. Shoulders were about this, were about three and a half, four foot wide, and had, uh, what was um, <clears throat> auburn in color, strawberry, almost strawberry blonde hair, uh, no neck, head right on its shoulders, and it turned and it went right inside the House of Mystery. Well, at this point, I've got people there that a lot of people aren't into Bigfoot uh, like we are. And so I made a decision not to run over there really quick. I didn't want to spook them. I finished the rest of the tour, which only took a few minutes. And then I went in to the other door of the House of Mystery. As soon as I walked in the door, there's a large weight in there that we use for demonstration. That weight had been pulled back, turned loose, and it was swinging back and forth. As I hit the doorway, there's a ladder there, and you'll see some photos of that in a minute. Uh, it's fifth, approximately 15 feet from the doorway right here. And uh, there was, it was actually like a thousand pound uh, person, like Biggie, took two large steps, boom, boom, and hit the doorway and was gone. Problem was, I couldn't see it. It was cloaking. But it was definitely there. There was nobody else on the grounds, nobody there to move that way. And I had seen it go in, yet once it was inside, it was cloaking, and I couldn't see it. <coughs> Is cloaking possible? Well, yes, it's possible. Scientists have been doing research on cloaking for years. Uh, <coughs> Toyota Motor Corporation in 2016 got the first U.S. patent for cloaking. Uh, right here, where your door and window uh, comes together, that's a blind spot. It causes many accidents. Toyota figured out a way to bend light around that, and in 2020, they're hiding cars. You will not be able to see uh, that door frame there. It will be cloaked. Our, our government has been using cloaking uh, for years. Our fighter jets, uh, Boeing came up with it, and I talked to uh, two of the Boeing engineers that were part of the scientific team that came up with that. And uh, our fighter jets are cloaked in a weak electromagnetic energy field that makes them almost completely invisible to enemy radar. And in many cases, they're invisible where you can't even see them. Plus, they move so fast by the time you see them, uh, they're gone. So there's many, if you research it, there's many other examples of cloaking. Um, I've talked about cloaking a little bit. Uh, mind speak, portals, and zapping. I've talked about portals. Um, many people get telepathic communications from the Sasquatch. Some people call it mind speak. I would always just call it tele mental telepathy. I've done it before. My wife, Tammy, and females, for whatever reason, like Scott said, 
tend to have uh, more interaction or maybe more open to what the soft spots are doing. And many times they'll be downloaded with information. We have at least two soft spots that come to Tammy and they download her with information, usually about uh, once every two months or something like that. And uh, she just hears it as almost hears it and seeing, sees it as spoken words with inside of her brain. All of you have experienced telepathic communication. We do it all the time. Our thoughts are energy. Every time we think a thought, it's an electrical impulse that fires between the synapses in our brains. And that energy leaves our brains and it connects with people that we are connected with. I mean, how many times have you ever thought about somebody a minute later you get a phone call? Talk about somebody you haven't seen, you go to the store, you run into them, and 10 minutes later they say, hey, I'm thinking about giving you a call. There's no such thing as a coincidence. We're constantly exchanging information with each other in the world around us, but most of the time, we just have too much monkey chatter going on in our brain, and we don't pick up on those messages. Uh, zapping. People in this room have been zapped. It's like a like an electrical charge. I've been zapped before at the Vortex. Uh, I was told not to go into an area one night that I usually go into and take pictures of. It's at the bottom of uh, some steps that lead down to another area. As soon as I got to those steps, uh, boom, something hit me, and I heard in my mind, don't come down here tonight. I walked away, thought it was kind of strange, came back, did the same thing, got zapped a little bit harder and was told again, don't come down here tonight. Well, I'm a slow learner. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I'm gonna go right through this. So I'm not afraid to go down there. Boom, I got hit really hard, backed me up, and in a very deep voice inside my head said, don't come down here tonight. For whatever reason, they did not want me down there. I think they were protecting me from something. So I took their advice, I went back to the house, next day I went back down there, and uh, there was uh, no zapping. <laughs> I think they actually throw out their energy when they zap you. you know, like they said, their electromagnetic field is probably way stronger than ours, and it's kind of like a Tai Chi master. Tai Chi masters can throw their energy and zap you, and that's after a long time of studying and practicing and meditation that they're able to do that. So it's not out of the realm of possibilities that it's happening, and when many people experience it, uh, obviously something is going on. We have lots of orbs, like I said before. Uh, I think there's about four or five different types of orbs. If you want to talk about orbs, uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about them. I've been researching orbs uh, since the uh, early 90s. And uh, I've gotten to work with us all over the world, and many of them look different. <clears throat> Steve Bracken is, I think, in the audience somewhere, a friend of ours, and uh, his friend Patty was at the Vortex. And we had been playing around all day long, trying to, having some interactions with the soft switch that was there. And one of the soft switch that is on the grounds, his name is Raybo. We've known Raybo since he was about 10 years old, Auburn in color, uh, just like the one that I saw going in the House of Mystery. Uh, he used to jump up and down for people when they would see him. And we've had two groups that have seen him outright, multiple witness sighting him. He's like a kid playing, like, hey, look at me, I'm over here. And then he runs off. Uh, well, that was 15 years ago, and uh, and I'll say he was about 10 years old. I think Ray was in his 20s now, a young adult male. And he interacts with Tammy and I on a very frequent basis and has been for some time. But this day, uh, we were asking Raybo to show himself. And Tammy and I have been asking him for a long time. We went in the house this week, we've been playing around in there for a while. And then Tammy came in, she goes, you guys don't have a camera, you're not taking any pictures. Give me your phone, Joe, I'll take some pictures. So she started taking pictures, and this is the first picture she got of this large orb right over uh, Steve's head. And Steve's had a long association with the Sasquatch. I think they're following around, and they're with it. But I thought that was kind of interesting. And then, uh, unfortunately, this is not going to do it justice, but uh, right there is 
a red arm, and it really bleeds out here, you can't see it. But I'm going to go back one slide. Uh, there I am, I'm standing there. There's a fan in the window, and there's nothing else there. And then uh, we have this red furry arm that shows up. If you look at it on the computer, you can definitely see the hair that's on it. Uh, you see that I have moved to another part of the house. And then the next photo, uh, Tammy took another photo, and now you can see there's a shoulder, an arm coming down, and it's almost, uh, it's auburn color, just the same color as the Sasquatch I saw going in the house in October. Uh, <clears throat> it's like it's trying to manifest itself in this dimension, and uh, we'd ask for a showing, and perhaps that's the best thing to do on that day. But uh, it, this doesn't do it justice when you see it on the computer where it's nice and clear. You can actually see that it is an arm and stuff like that. <clears throat> we do lots of experiments at the Vortex. One of the experiments uh, we do with different things is try to open portals. Uh, this is a Tesla device, Eridal Riviera, is the uh, uh, scientist from uh, Puerto Rico. He contacted us about a Tesla device that he had. He actually got the patent from the patent office, took all the uh, uh, specifications from it, programmed it in a computer, and they 3D printed uh, this thing right here. It's called the torsion field. You put, we put 83 watts of electricity into the field, and we generated, once we turned it on and got it up, we were generating about 432 watts of energy. But we also measured the field before we turned it on. We did some experiments in the gift shop before we actually took it outside. And what happens is the energy comes down, circles around, goes through the center, uh, circles around, and then comes back up. It's kind of like a, a wormhole. And that's what basically Tesla thought. You had a big enough one, you could create a wormhole or a portal with it. We measured our energy field. It was in the, uh, let's say, six, seven, eight hundred milligrass of electromagnetic energy before we started. As we cranked it up and we got this thing tuned up, we were up to 44,300 milligrass of electromagnetic energy. The whole place was vibrating. We could feel the energy. We went and checked the vortex, made sure everything was up good out there. When we went outside and checked it, the energy up there had spiked up into 14, 15,000 milligauss per inch too. So then we took it outside, set it up, and we did some experiment, experiments in the center of the big vortex. We had about seven or eight different meters that we could measure the energy field with. We got it up in the 44,000 range again. By the way, when we go have an MRI done, an MRI, when you get into that tube, they turn on uh, around 50, 54,000 milligauss of electromagnetic energy. Most people don't realize an MRI, once you're in there and they turn on the field, you become the field. And we think of ourselves as being solid. Uh, they don't have a camera that goes around and takes pictures from different angles. As they change the polarity of the field, your atoms change a little bit, they get a picture of you. They change a little bit more, they get a picture of you. So they can flip your atoms 180 degrees. And that just goes to show you if a machine with an electromagnetic field can flip our atoms 180 degrees, we're not really solid. We're really just energy fields. <coughs> anyway, we did experiments there. I don't have time to show you all the photos, but here is Iridad, and he's out of phase. And as we took photos around, uh, we were all out of phase. Sometimes we were only partially there. Sometimes, uh, I'm sure at some point in time, uh, we, you, you wouldn't have been able to see us. One of the reasons why we wanted to do that is we wanted to see if we could create a tipping point where we put more energy into the system and cause an event horizon where things happen. I uh, didn't have, I had a lot of other cameras at the time, but I didn't have a Wi-Fi camera that I could um, put in a house of mystery and monitor in the house. And we got a Harbor Freight on cheap Wi-Fi system. Uh, it's about 250 yards or feet out to the house of mystery from our house. I uh, went down there, and our intention was to see what was happening in the house of mystery. 
I didn't want to offend the Sasquatch people. Like Scott said, he put out game cameras. I've done it for years, and then finally I just quit. I put out game cameras to see game now, not Sasquatch. Uh, but I went down there, took the camera down there. I showed it to him, and we speak to him. Tammy and I talk to him all the time. And I just told him, I go, this is a camera. You guys are familiar with cameras. I want to put it in the House of Mystery and see what happens here based on the experiments that we've done. You've witnessed our experiments. You've felt the energy. I'm going to leave it in here for a couple days, and uh, you guys can check it out and uh, see what you think about it. If you want to be on uh, film, I invite you to come in. If not, please stay out of the House of Mystery for the next week or so, because we are going to be filming in here. Next day I went down, the camera was outside. Um, <laughs> laying on the ground. I think they tossed it out the window. But anyway, nobody had been down there. We're, we're closed, and nobody had been down there. So I picked up the camera, came back inside, and I said, hey, you know, you guys gotta be respectful to me. We're being respectful to you. I'm telling you the camera's gonna be in here. And if you don't want to get your picture taken or get a video of it, then don't come in the house of mystery. But please let us do our experiments. And if you want to be on them, then please come in. And then I, I just, it just came to me. I said, by the way, don't you think it's time you show the world what you really are? And the next day I hooked up the camera. Uh, we monitored it off and on in a week. We were really busy trying to close up the store. We hadn't really paid attention to it. And I did not have a 32 gigabyte uh, whatever disk to put inside. So we weren't recording anything. One day, about five days later, I came into the house. Tammy was in the store doing inventory. It was very ready to close up. And uh, the infrared uh, button on the camera or on the monitor was going crazy. And I walked in there and uh, this is, usually I do this from around here, uh, and I, I couldn't get these videos from this particular camera system to load into my, uh, into my program. So I, I'm actually gonna have to do it from over there, and I'll show you what I saw, okay? How's my time? Perfect. Perfect, right? All right. Set it up. The only place you could get reception with the monitor was sitting on a desk, turning it a certain way, and if we moved it anywhere else in the office, we didn't get any reception at all. So we had it sitting in this one particular spot, right on the edge of the desk, uh, in the, where you walk in the door of our office. I heard the infrared uh, sound going off. I knew there was something in there, and uh, I walked in, and that's what I saw. Anyway, what I saw as soon as I walked in was an orb, very similar to the orb that uh, was in the House of Mystery. It wasn't as uh, big, but it was extremely bright, and it was setting off uh, the infrared and the motion detector. I grabbed my cell phone really quick. I took a video of it because I knew it wasn't recording. Uh, I fumbled my cell phone, and that's when you see it fall to the ground. So I only got about two seconds of, uh, of seeing the orb there. There you go, we got it now. Alright. <clears throat> Go ahead and double click on that. So there I saw it, and then I dropped my cell phone, and that was it. I was pretty excited. Uh, <clears throat> Now I'm all set, and all of a sudden, 
something appears from over to the side over here. And uh, it appears it has a physical presence, and then it floats up and goes across to the other side of the house in this room. You can see it over there. Just keep letting it go. Uh, <coughs> I was kind of shaking seeing this. And uh, I believed it was Rainbow. And uh, he's going to come back around here in just a second. I'll tell you what, let me change places with you, all right? I'll just sit for a second. And, uh, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. When he came in, I, when he came in the second time, uh, he stood in front of the, or was blocking the <coughs> Wi-Fi, and it was out of range for a second. Then he moved, and this is what we got. And I'm, kind of, I'm going to let that run through right there. Notice that, oh, there it is. We'll move back in. You can see it has a very large aura. Uh, as he walks across, he turns back and looks back. And then you can see a shoulder there. Uh, <coughs> we've done experiments uh, with myself in the house of ministry, different colors of blankets, different things. There he's starting to uh, move up again, perhaps turning into orc form. You guys want to see that one more time? Yeah. I'm going to take it just a little bit at a time so you can get a better look at it. I want to see a side little press there. There you can see the head and the shoulders without the neck, which is exactly what I saw before. And then here is where he kind of looks back. Just go ahead and let that one through. I believe that's Rebo. The Sasquatch that's been there since I've been there as a little kid. Uh, <clears throat> I can't prove that, but no matter what it is, it's an entity that has a physical presence and then turns into some sort of energy being and floats around the room. We've been back from Arizona. We spent our winters in Arizona. We've been back to Montana about two weeks, and uh, <clears throat> Tammy had one of those uh, appear to her in her bedroom, floating around. She had the uh, uh, she had the feeling that it was a female energy, and she had, actually asked it for a healing because she's been having some problems, and she said she felt like it went inside of her, and some of the problems that she had after that uh, seemed to diminish. Remember I told you the Blackfeet and other tribes believe they are protectors and healers. Notice you have a uh, blue, and then you have a white haze around. It almost looks like we're looking into a, uh, perhaps a portal or another dimension. It's going to come from the left right here. It's moving around there. I think it's trying to duck under the camera, maybe. And you can almost see there's some orb-like stuff in the background there. Almost like it wants to go back into an orb as it moves across there, and then it floats up. Yeah. 
things I want to point out to you, though, is microphone. One of the things I want to point out to you, I'm trying to find it here. Uh, it's a little bit further down the line. Um, we have, uh, I think the first day we had 18 videos of uh, this being uh, playing in the house of mystery. Um, uh, <clears throat> By the way, that is me on my knees filming this with my cell phone since we didn't have the it's going to come in from the left. It's almost like it has its back to us. It's got an arm going out to the right and then a leg that will follow it. But what I want you to see um, is right in there. Is right in that area right there. You can see the boards in the background, and then all of a sudden, those boards start to disappear as something manifests itself right there. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but you see that uh, big black thing in that area, almost like a shoulder, a head in there. And you don't see the background. And then when I let it play through, uh, it kind of disappears there. I'm going to let another one of these go through there. We can watch it as we go. Like I said, we got about 18 videos that night. Over the next couple days, we got several more videos. Uh, the first thing we did that night was we went out there and we thanked the Sasquatch. We thanked Rabo. Uh, we said, we really appreciate you showing yourselves to us. And uh, we'd like to continue our relationship. We're not going to trip you. But if you continue to want to have uh, this type of interaction, we would appreciate it. When we left for the winter, I put another camera on this monitor to record it from inside of the house. And uh, we have a complete scan that is completely filled up with uh, various videos of things happening in the house of mystery. Some of them are boards, uh, some of them are entities flying through. But we haven't been able to, we haven't had time to try to get our business open, and we haven't really had time uh, to go back and review those. None of this has been doctored. I can't even, I barely get my computer on and stuff like that. What you're seeing is real footage as it happens. I was seeing it, and like I said, if it's not a Sasquatch, which I believe it is, just by the characteristics that we see, then you're actually witnessing uh, some sort of entity that does have both a spiritual presence or an energy presence, and then appears to have a physical presence. Maybe this accounts for what many of us are seeing and experiencing in the field. When people say they see a Sasquatch, and then the Sasquatch disappears right in front of them. Or they see a Sasquatch, uh, and then it turns into an orb and zips off. So there's a lot of possibilities out there, and there is science behind this. It, it's quantum physics, and it's all about energy. Can you bring up my presentation again, that one slide with a high hole on it? Um, do I have a little bit more time? One minute. One minute. All right. Uh, I need a couple volunteers. So there's one right there. Russell, come on. You could uh, come on this side right here. I'm going to let you guys hold it in between you. All right. Grab one. It won't hurt you. I've lost any video. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and grab their hands. You didn't know you were going to have to hold hands today. And uh, we just created a connection using uh, uh, break the connection over there, yeah. All right, Russell, you break it on this side. Hang on there, guys. All right, I'm going to break it right here in this top wall chain. Thank you, guys.
Let's get these guys to be out of the way. That is because we have an aura or an electromagnetic energy field that we can make that connection. And every single one of you right now are sharing the energy in this room. You're sharing your auras. You always do. And we are connected through the Earth's electromagnetic field, both with our thoughts and our physical being. And I'd like to thank uh, Tom and everybody that put this on and invited me to come. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Uh, all over the home, and you're setting a mind that is stretched by new experiences and never go back to its old dimensions. And hopefully, I've expanded your dimensions out a little bit today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.